Hello, Kristen here with A Framers Touch, located in downtown historic Forest Grove. Full service custom picture framer and gift gallery established in 2003. Um, we are here today with our virtual happy hour segments. We meet with a different artists every week just to get to know them a little bit and to hear about their techniques and style. Today we have a Beaverton artist, Pia Roshan. She does large format chalk art. So let me bring Razier on and let's learn about uh, chalk art today. Hi, Razier, how are you? Hi, I'm doing fantastic, doing great. Thank you for joining us for our happy hour today. I was really particularly interested because you ha you your craft is something that I'm not all that familiar. Um, as a picture framer, things come into my store and I frame them, but it's a little di more difficult to frame your large format chalk art. <laughs> As a, yeah, it would be really <laughs> heavy, and I don't know if we could get it through the door. A little yeah. jackhammer to get the slot out. How did you get into that? So I started doing large-scale chalk art um, in 2004, because I was actually part of a larger mural crew, and I got invited to do chalk drawing at a festival in San Diego County, and instantly fell in love with it. Just loved working really large, loved working on the ground. Um, especially at the festivals, there's thousands of people that walk by while I'm working on the pastels and I just fell in love with the whole process. Do you have to use special chalk for those? We do, yeah. So I use um, chalk pastels, which are really high pigment, and that, that allows me to blend the way I would blend if I was working in a studio. Wow. Yeah. And what size? Because I hear you say large format. So, and I'm thinking the chalk art festivals that I'm familiar with, uh, for example, the Forest Grove, the Valley Art has a chalk art, Beaverton has a chalk art. We block off squares in sidewalks. So everybody has like maybe, I don't know, a four foot by four foot space. Is that what you consider large format? No, that's really <laughs> small. <laughs> Tell so, us. So um, throughout the year, I can do up to like 14 events a year, and the, the standard size is 10 foot by 10 foot. Um, Holy cow! What sidewalk is 10 foot by 10 foot? <laughs> no, we do it out in the middle of the streets. Um, and so like the event coordinators will block off entire city blocks. Um, we'll take over shopping complexes or like rec center parking lots. And it could be anywhere from 20 artists to 100 artists all working on 10 foot by 10 foot. Um, some of my other large squares I've done are nine foot by 12 foot is another common size. And then I have a, a chalk team that um, we've done 30 foot, 35 foot diameter uh, circle chalk squares as well. Um, yeah, so really that's, that's like normal size for a large scale chalk artist. Wow. So talk to me, you say you do like 14 of these a year? That's a yeah. lot. Do you travel with this? Is this something that, do you get paid? How, is this something you can make an income on? Definitely, yeah. So um, basically May, like late April to October is what we all call chalk season. And if you play it right, you could basically be at a chalk festival every weekend. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Period. And they're all over the country. And, um, and so like the coordinators will pay the artists a stipend, it's a negotiated rate, usually a flat rate for the entire weekend. The event coordinators create the hotel, they cover all of my food. Um, usually at the events I get the chalk for free, I don't really have to bring a lot with me. So yeah, it's a, it's, um, I like, it's kind of like a circus, like you get paid to be there, you're a performer, um, yeah. it becomes a large part of your annual income. Yeah, that's amazing. So how would how would an artist if if an artist like I would think a mural artist would transition really well into a chalk art. So how would one find out about these festivals? You can super easily um, just online search chalk art festival and then whatever your state is. Not all states have them, but you can still find them pretty close by. And then um, yeah, muralists are great transition artists into the chalk because they understand size and scale. Um, small scale drawing and illustrator, illustration artists have a hard time working out on the concrete for two days in the sun. So just a heads up. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. 
I would think that would be really hard. I also think it would be really hard on your body being on the ground all the time. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it's not for the, the stiff boned individuals. Right. And so when you have these, I assume it's a timed event because you, you don't have all week to do this. You have what, just the weekend or a day? Yeah, they're usually two days. And you and most artists will work like 10 hour days. So Saturday, Sunday, and you have to be done Sunday mid to late afternoon because the, the coordinators will have photographers that are coming through and you have to beat the photographers. Wow. So how are you told what to draw or do you have, are you inspired by something specific? How does that happen? How do you choose what you draw? Most of us have a theme. Um, and so they just tell you the theme at the beginning of the year and you make your own drawing. Some coordinators require you to actually submit your drawing so that they can approve it or they'll give you feedback, uh, you know, change this, add that. Um, but overall, I get full liberty on what my composition is going to be. So, Razia, would you mind if I shared some photographs that you sent of your chalk art? Because they're phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, please do. Absolutely. Okay, look at that. That is amazing. Thank you. That does not look like it's been done on the street. That that's that looks like that's pastel and paper. Yeah, it really is. The um, the quality of the chalk pastels themselves give you that that long blending range. And so that's where you get to play with all the details and play with all the, the kind of visual texture. Wow. And what's the size of this one approximately? So this one was done in Georgia at the Chalktoberfest and it's nine foot by 12 foot on the asphalt. Wow. How do you maintain perspective? Like, look, that's crazy. I'd be on a ladder trying to figure it out all the time. <laughs> This is such a great picture. Um, this was taken by another chalk artist, and this is that image that you just shared. Yes. Um, so sometimes, you know, I cheat. Uh, I grid the artwork out, so I'll do one foot by one foot squares on the asphalt. Uh, other times, I'll do what's called pouncing, and so that is where you take your drawing and replicate it on paper, and then um, use a pouncing wheel and do tiny little dots, thousands of tiny little dots, and then use uh, chalk. Um, powder and rub that through the dots and then that way everything is perfectly in proportion. Wow I would think that would take a long time to do too. You probably have to like match up lots of pieces of paper to fit that. Yeah it is and you know that's the part of the story that not everybody gets to see is all the prep time, the hours of prep time. Right. Oh my gosh that is just mind blowing. I can't even speak I'm so excited. About how many, look at all the different people. Do these chalk art festivals bring in a lot of people? Yeah, so the festivals around the country, some of them are new and some of them are old, and on average they'll bring about 12,000 to 30,000 attendees within their first few years. Yeah. And then like the one in Georgia, um, they've calculated about 80,000 attendees. And then there's an uh, older festival that's been running a lot longer that calculates 180,000 attendees. Wow. So this is all over the course of two days that all these people are coming from, you know, great driving distance to come and see. Do you wear gloves? A few times I've like done chalk art on the street. I've skinned my fingers down to nothing. <laughs> oh, um, nope, you're not there. No, no, I personally don't wear gloves, but a lot of my fellow chalk artists do. Yeah. That's great. Oh my gosh. So are there any special like techniques that you use when you create something this large? Um, I do. So, so, you know, over the centuries, chalk art is about 500 years old. Um, we've started using tools, literally like pool noodles. Um, <laughs> you cut down pool noodles down into quarters and they blend perfect. The, the pastel wow. is so soft. Um, grocery store bags, those are also really great for blending. Carpet squares, uh, little free carpet square samples. I've seen other artists use their pill bottles to smash the pastels so they can blend them easier. Yeah. All of our chalk bags are full of little tricks. Wow. And now you said this chalk art goes back how many years? Uh, 500 years. Well, so, where did, what's the history behind it? Um, so drawing on the street came from the artists that were doing work indoors 
so in Italy, they were called the La Maranori, and they were artists that were commissioned to do large pieces, uh, many frescoes and murals and doors, and the general public didn't get to see that work. They didn't have access to this kind of caliber of work. And so those artists would recreate those images outside on the streets, on the cobblestone streets, so the passerbys could actually enjoy this kind of skill, these talents. And so they were called La Maranori because most of the work that they recreated on the street was uh, the Madonna and Child. And then over a few centuries, that was picked up by artists from London, and they started working in the London streets. You know, that, that famous Mary Poppins um, moment of the chalk where they jump into the chalk drawing. Yes. Yeah. So um, here in America, it didn't really come over to America until about 35 years ago when two event coordinators from Santa Barbara went and saw the chalk artists, and then they started I Madonori in Santa Barbara that's been going 35 years strong. And it's, wow. it's just spread out from there. I and mean, now we have chalk festivals all over the country popping up, new ones popping up every year. Yeah, it's amazing. And it, it, looking at this picture here with all of um, the squares and all of the people, you, you, I guess it's a constant reminder, art unites everyone. You don't have to, it ha doesn't have to be your piece or your jam but it unites people, it speaks to everyone. And even if it's not something that you like, it's still conversation and it is something that speaks to you. And Absolutely. what a wonderful, I mean, it's all for all age, all, everyone. So it's all inclusive. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. And all yep. the artists come from different walks and they all have different stories to share. So if somebody was wanting to get into chalk art for the first time, do you have any um, uh, tips that you can offer them? Start drawing. Mm -hmm. Start <laughs> Go there. for it. Dive in. <laughs> Dive in. Be simple. Be complicated. Be willing to take risks. I would say, um, you know, stop by your local art supply store, like a, a, a true quality art supply store. Uh, I don't want to give too many plugs, but here in Beaverton, Oregon, we have. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, stop by your art supply store, get some student grade chalk pastels, not the oil pastels, you want the, the powder chalk pastels, draw in your driveway, play on the sidewalk, use your fingers, blend the colors, experiment, and then draw your favorite things. Just, okay. So really get to know the materials, jump in on a mural crew if you have the opportunity to kind of shadow a muralist so that you start to understand scale and perspective, and then Sign up for a chalk festival. If they, most of them have an application process, if you have not accepted that first year, go and talk to the chalk artists. They're gonna tell you all those little tips and tricks. And many of us as festival chalk artists, we pull in the crowd. If I have an area that needs blending help, I will grab the closest 10 year old and oh. help me here. Um, I've had parents, you know, these chalk festivals are created. There's another artist in our, in our herd, we call ourselves herd because we travel around the country. Um, and I believe she's pushing 90, so you can start oh any time. That's great. That's great. And you know, when we started this interview, Razier, I was so super excited to talk to you about your chalk art festival. I really failed to tell the viewers all that you really do. And you and I had met through Twelton Valley Creates. You're the director. Correct. Yes. And Twelton Valley Create supports the art, culture, heritage, and humanities of Washington County. And uh, you've been so instrumental um, for TVC and particularly through this entire COVID-19, offering free resources uh, for people who fall in the art, culture, heritage, and humanities sector. And right. that's great. Um, can you tell us how a little bit about what you do and how your art influences what you do with TVC? Yeah, so as the director, as the executive director for Twilight and Valley Creates, um, you know, we are an art service organization for the arts, culture, heritage, and humanities, and we offer a lot of professional development through the COVID-19. Um, we've been offering more informational sessions. These are 30 minutes to 45 minutes that are really blitz information so that you can get connected to other resources. We have what we call a communication hub, which is kind of the most comprehensive source for finding arts events through our calendar for following news um, via our social media. We have two email list serves that bring those resources and those events straight into your own inbox. Um, and then through our professional development, and we also do arts advocacy. So really helping 
other event coordinators support that the work they're doing and we work hand in hand with our legislators on making sure that the arts are part of um, you know policy the way that our cities are developed and that we have spaces for these kind of events for different cultural gatherings that really bring those stories to the people and you are also involved if i'm not mistaken in the beaverton child cart yes i coordinate it <laughs> oh my gosh wow that's a huge job it was something you know i go to these festivals all over the country and i just love how people have an opportunity to come outside. And so when I officially moved to Beaverton in 2015, I said, why don't we have something like that here in our, you know, just simply in our metro area. Right. And of course our Oregonian said, no, it rains, we can't do that. And I was like, it rains every year in Georgia and they've been doing it for 20 years. So right. we can do this. Well, and you know, the chalk art, the pigment is amazingly strong. Um, as you know, Framers Touches in Historic Forest Grove and Valley Art is a non for profit gallery in Forest Grove. And quite a few years ago, they started a chalk art, an annual chalk art festival that covers, uh, I don't know, six or seven square blocks of downtown in front of all the merchants. And the chalk art, the pigment and stuff, lasts almost until the next year. <laughs> it, it can be, it, and it's fun to uh, enjoy it well after the chalk art festival is over. Yeah. Absolutely. And I love that festival. I've been going to that one and shopping for a few years too. Yeah. And that's a, that's a great place for people that are starting to do chalk art because they don't have any requirements to um, step in. You just buy a box of chalk from them and, and uh, you're in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love that festival. I'm working with the coordinators over there too. Well, Rosie, I thank you so much for meeting with us and sharing this chalk art and teaching us all about large scale format chalk yes. art. My pleasure. And anybody can always contact me if they have other questions. Okay, well, and we've got your information up on the screen. So thank you so much. It was fun. I learned a lot. And we'll be talking to you soon. Great. Ciao. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, that was super fun to talk to Razier Roshan. Uh, it's hard to imagine you could do like 12 by 9 foot chalk art uh, in the middle of the street. So I sure hope that whatever community you are in, uh, you look it up and see if you can participate in a chalk art. If you have any questions, reach out to Razier. She is warm and welcome and happy to share. Uh, and look up the Twelton Valley Creates. If you're in the Washington County area, there it is a, a phenomenal organization that does everything it can to nurture the arts, cu arts culture, heritage, and humanities of our county. Um, thanks again. Until next week, we'll see you soon.